Uh, Coach, how was uh, uh, your practice today? It's only had a beautiful day to be out there. How did, how did it go? It was a great day to be out there. It's the 70 degrees when we got started and just what a really nice night. The, the, uh, I think the players were fired up to be out there in such nice weather. And I, I thought it was good. I, you know, the competition was very spirited, which is enjoyable to watch and certainly entertaining. Um, there's good things going on all over the field, and there's a lot of things that we really need to correct going on all over the field. So uh, just, again, a work in progress and continue to try to get better. Absolutely. Uh, uh, what were your thoughts uh, looking at the tape from uh, Saturday's scrimmage? Any uh, players that stood out? Uh, I just I think there's just some guys improving and getting better. Um, I, I don't know that there's – guys to call out that that uh, that I thought had great scrimmages or anything like that just and guys just steadily improving we got a lot of uh, a lot of special team snaps in which was great um, you don't often get those those live reps like that in practice so it was good to get those in the in the scrimmage um, some of the young linemen just getting more reps on both sides of the ball and, and finding out more about them. The, uh, some young tight ends. It's fun to kind of watch those guys grow and develop. Hopefully they're getting better. We're going to need them for depth. The, uh, the quarterbacks and, and watching those, those guys uh, just, I think each practice improving just a little bit each time we get out there. and um, Secondary and building the depth over there. Um, Marquell's out right now and with that hand and, and uh, he'll be back, but Kind of good to see those other guys get thrown into the fire and have to take all the reps with the ones and, and the twos. So, you know, we're we're, uh, we're making headway, but we're a long way from being ready to play. And uh, I'm not I'm not ready to anoint anybody or or uh, talk about what kind of season we're going to have. We're we're just going to try to be the best we can be. And right now, I don't think we've maximized who we can be. We talked a little bit today with Darius Richardson, the the senior uh, nose tackle. Uh, uh, he's out. Of, he's been at West Point a while. He got in, I think, eight or nine games last year. Uh, how do you see him at his development at nose tackle? It, it's we were. It's a funny you ask because we were just talking about him this morning in the staff meeting, and just what an improvement he's made, especially over the last couple of years, and. Uh, I, I think there was probably a point in the sophomore year where uh, maybe maybe the end of his freshman year, we just weren't sure if he was ever going to factor in. As you said, he got to play a bunch last year, and we expect him to play a good bit this year if he's a starter. And if not, he'll play uh, a significant number of snaps, that's for sure. He's right now just playing really hard, and um, oh, he's he's got uh, he's got some things he does really well and, and some things that still need improving. And, we're working on, on all of it. Good. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Jeff, um, is, is it true that, I mean, I've always, from talking to you, I get the sense that you kind of hold a, a special place in your heart for guys who just stick with it, uh, especially if they haven't seen as much playing time over their first or two or three years, but they're still with you here. Um, do you feel that way about Darius? Yeah, for sure. He's definitely one of those guys. You know, uh, John Radigan was a guy like that. He stuck it out and finally played. And, and uh, so that was, that was fun to, to see a guy like him. Um, you know, a guy like uh, Santa McCoy. He had a bunch of really good running backs he was playing with. That whole crew, Andy Davidson and Darnell Woolfolk and Kalen Hold. And I mean, that's a great bunch of running backs that we had here. Great for us. And uh, he stuck it out and and had a really good senior year. And uh, that, I, I do. I mean, I, I, I probably because that was the kind of player I was. I mean, I, I wasn't uh, I wasn't talented. I just tried hard and worked hard. And and by the time I was a senior, I finally got to play some and uh, and, and really make a contribution. And it meant a lot to me. And I think the you know, the hard work and the dedication and and just the, the, the no quit attitude. I, I really, you know, I, um, you know, I kind of feel like those, those guys, uh, 
when 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 they finally get a chance to play and and contribute it probably means as much to them as it does anybody because they've had to work so hard and put so much into it do you think it's a little easier to fulfill that uh, that path here at a service academy than it is out in you know the other the rest of the college world i mean you were you've coached in both i think it's much more difficult to do it here why is that the the, the challenges that these guys face academically the uh the emotional stress of just everything that's on their plate you know we pack their as they say we 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 pack their rucksacks full and uh and we're we're putting we're putting a lot on them and they've got to manage that and it's very difficult and when they're not playing and they're on the scout team or they've worked really hard and they see a guy that's in the same class as them or a guy that's in a class behind them that's beating them out it's hard um, and there's a lot of guys and we bring in a lot of guys each year so I think it's it it becomes much more difficult when there's 85 guys on scholarship there's only 85 guys on scholarship when you're at a traditional school so how many wide receivers do they have on scholarship how many defensive linemen do they have on scholarship how many quarterbacks do they have on scholarship here everybody's on scholarship so i, I think it's just more challenging to rise to the top and and especially when you've kind of had to battle your way through mm -hmm. We had Bryson Daly in here. Uh, can you give us an update on, you know, how you're feeling about his spring? I think he's becoming more comfortable playing. Uh, really had high hopes for him coming into spring that that he might be able to, to uh, compete a little bit closer to the top group of guys right away. That hasn't been the case. That doesn't mean he won't. Um, but he played at the prep school and had a really good year at the prep school. And he played on the scout team all last year. And so the transition back is, is it's not easy. So he'll, he'll come along. He's a really physical player, uh, hard runner, smart kid, um, and, and a great competitor. So those are all great qualities to have as a, as a quarterback. Throws the ball well, and he'll, he'll, he'll figure it out. He's just got to be, got to be less robotic, a little more fluid. And that'll come with experience and and getting more comfortable with the with the system again. Mm -hmm. I'm no football coach, but you know, he mentioned that he played some some option football down in an, in high school, but the triple option was new to him. Is is it a big adjustment having to to jump to the triple option? It's an adjustment for everybody we coach. Um, and as, as far as I know, uh, Tyre Tyler and. Uh, Kay Ballard and Jamel Jones, none of those guys ran the triple option in high school. And, and uh, you know, the quarterbacks we've had, Christian Anderson last year, he didn't, he didn't run the option in high school. It's uh, something they learn when they get here. The year at the prep school helps a lot of them um, kind of get, get their feet wet a little bit. And, uh, and certainly when they get to, to this level and the speed of the game, how fast it goes, there's an adjustment there too. Um, does he does he have uh, the type of sprinter speed to get to the outside effectively, or is he a guy who's going to really pound it up inside? Who's that, Bryson Daly? Uh, yes, sir. He's a pounder. He's two, two. He's I don't know what he weighs. Two hundred twenty pounds, probably. He looks like a linebacker. He's a big kid. He's a strong, tough runner. He'll be good at the stuff we do. Mm -hmm. uh, I also mentioned to him that Kay Bernard was 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 coached. I'm, I'm sorry, Kay Ballard was coached by his father in high school, just like Bryson was by his father. Is there something about the father quarterback relationship that's kind of advantageous, beneficial? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, I think when you're a high school coach, as, uh, as involved as you typically are as a high school coach in the X's and O's and the day-to-day the, the -day meeting time with, with your players, you know, it's a lot different at the college level. We've got a specialized coach for each position. Um, I'm not a position coach or a coordinator. So there, there is a special relationship. I'm a coach's kid. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't my dad's quarterback, but 
I know the relationship that we had, how much we talked football and the rides you know, back and forth to school and after practice and on the bus on the way to games. Um, it's a special bond for sure. I, I coached a guy at Georgia Southern, Jay Bo Shaw, who played for his dad uh, in high school. And uh, he was a really good high school quarterback, was a really good college quarterback, won a bunch of games for us. Uh, there's, there's, I think there's something about that. It doesn't mean you got to have a dad as a coach to be a really good quarterback. Obviously, that's not, that's not true. But I think there's a special relationship. And, you know, Jay Bo ended up going back and coaching with his dad, Lee Shaw. And, uh, and so there's, uh, you know, there's a, there's a bond there. I think that's pretty special. I think that's with any kid that, that plays for his dad in high school or, or in college for that matter. Sure. Thanks, Jeff. You bet. Coach, oh, just uh, follow up on your thought about everyone gets a scholarship at, at West Point. And uh, I've been at our day when you uh, sent out the list of the, of the freshman uh, uh, football players coming in. It's usually a pretty long list, 60 or more players, and as you have players coming in from direct and also from the prep school. Um, then you have a lot of players that's, you know, at the summer scrimmages. How do you narrow that down uh, from the players coming in from your two sources uh, to uh, the players that are going to be on the team in the fall? Well, all the, all the, all the freshmen come in, they're, they're on the team. And uh, like every college team, every team I know of, there's, there's just – there, there's just attrition that happens for whatever reason. Um, guys realize that, you know what, I can't beat those guys out. Uh, guys that stay, they stay on scholarship here and they go do something else. Guys that decide, you know what, I really want to play. I want to get on the field and contribute to a college football team and I'm not going to be able to do it here. I'm going to transfer to another school. Um, there's just natural attrition. You know, high school teams, they'll have it. 85 freshmen out for football and they'll have 20 seniors. You know, it's, there's attrition that happens. And here we'll bring in, you know, those 60 guys you talk about. And by the time they're seniors, there's 25 of them. We had 30, 30, 35, 38 this year. There were a lot of seniors. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's just the model that, that we use here to build a program. And when, when this team's been successful historically, um, I think that's the model that has been used. And I know that the other academies use the same model. And uh, I have some experience to, you know, at one of the other academies to know that. So it's just the way, just the way we do it. And just you uh, got about a week and a half of spring practice uh, remaining at a scrimmage Saturday and then the spring game a week from uh, Friday night. Uh, what did you want to accomplish in this last 10 days? Uh, get better and stay healthy. Uh, I don't want I don't want anybody to get hurt so much that they won't be able to come out and in the fall camp. That's always frustrating. You get a guy hurt in spring ball, and 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 then and then you're talking about when's he going to be able to return full go, and you're talking about late August or early September, maybe by the first game. I hope we don't have any of those. Um, but I want to improve. I want to improve as a team and be more efficient on on our on our units offensively, defensively, each of the kicking units, and uh, and get some evaluations on uh, particularly these young guys that we don't know as much about, get some evaluations on those guys in the next week and a half and the scrimmage this Saturday and the spring game next Friday night and figure out if those guys are going to be able to help our program moving forward or not. Is it important to uh... – for the for the different groups, offensive line, defensive line, linebackers, defensive backs, to start to get used to playing with each other. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if it's that important that that a unit uh, and the and the eleven guys that are out there are comfortable with each other. I think just guys that can play their position can do their job. So it it really it shouldn't matter who's in the game if if the guy's doing his job and he's he's playing fundamentally sound and, and, and playing his assignment as his 111th on the, on the unit, then it shouldn't matter who's in there. And hopefully our guys don't feel like if, if some particular guy's not in the game or if it's not this core group of guys in the game that we're not going to be able to play good defense or play good offense or whatever it may be.
Very good. Thanks, Coach. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Have a great night, guys.